Well, hello everybody and welcome to another video. Now you join me as I make my way towards Adventure Motor Vehicle. Those are the guys that imported and sold me this Mitsubishi Delica. They've looked after me ever since I purchased it. Now I'm taking this van in for a bit of a general health check and an oil change in preparation for what is gonna be a mammoth road trip, but that's not until August. Now I've just found out that whilst my Delica is getting worked on in the shop, they've supplied me with another Mitsubishi Delica as the courtesy vehicle, a more modern Delica, different to this, the next model up from this. And that got me thinking, this vehicle is 20 years old. She's done a lot of miles. We're gonna do many more miles this year and she's not gonna last forever. So when the day comes, what am I gonna replace this with? And what will be my new adventure photography camper mobile? I think the new Delica D5 could be a viable option. So quite excited to see what it's like. Get her out there, get driving, do a bit of camping, and of course, enjoy some landscape photography. I have arrived in Delica heaven, <laughs> adventure motor vehicles. Everywhere I look, there's old Delicas, new Delicas, it's just a feast for the eyes. There's my Delica here for an oil change and a bit of a health check. However, just here is the car that I'll be taking for the next day or two. So this is a Delica D5 and it never actually occurred to me that, you know, let's, let's not think about this too much, but when my Delica, when my van finally, you know, goes to a better place, I'm gonna to need to replace that vehicle. Now you've got your classic, your Volkswagens and your Fords, but I like to be a bit different. I'm a bit of a contrarian and I never really considered the D5 until very recently, or in fact, until I got an email saying, oh, your, uh, your courtesy car is gonna be the new Delica. Now I say new, it's not new, it's not a new vehicle, but it's the latest Delica. Um, and I'm looking forward because as much as I love this van, it's, it's full of, you know, it's very characterful. <laughs> it's quite thirsty. It's not the fastest, although it's very comfortable and very capable. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what, what, what the new one's like, or the latest one. So I'm gonna move a bunch of stuff from this van into that van because we're gonna go, I think we're gonna go into the Yorkshire Dales. Um, I'm kind of in between the Yorkshire Dales and the Lake District, and the weather looks a little bit better in the Dales. It'll be a bit quieter, so we'll go there. We'll uh, load up the new van, have a look around, have fun configuring it into a bit of a camper, talk more about the vehicle and all that sort of stuff. So we'll get loaded and then we'll get going. Oh. All right. Well, I have to say this feels a lot different to my Delica, flipping heck. Well, it's nice, it feels feels very posh in here, loads of space. And immediately I'm just looking at the space in the back thinking this could be the perfect camper for one. Ah, right, no, it's, uh, it's keyless. So, um, is, uh, the, we're off, whoa, oh yeah. Feels like a car, feels like a car. So before we arrive at our location and discuss the living quarters in the back and all of that good fun that we're gonna have, I just wanna talk about the drive because the biggest problem with my Delica is, although it looks great, it's different, it's practical, it's great for what I do, which is kind of driving all over the place, going to remote areas, difficult to reach areas with my photography. You know, for the 90, 5%, 97% of the driving I do, which is just on A roads like we're on now, it can get a bit arduous. You know, it leans in the corners. You can't go more than 20 mile an hour around the corner. It's very thirsty. It's not very fast. So if you want to overtake or you're going uphill, you've got to drop down to a really low gear and that gets the revs up and the engines start screaming. Yeah, it's, it's definitely got its quirks, but this, 
This feels like I'm driving a Volkswagen Golf. It's smooth, it's quiet, it's responsive, it's fast-ish, don't get me wrong, it's, it's not sporty, although it does have a flappy paddle gearbox, but no, this is nice. It's two-wheel drive when you want it to be, but you can select four-wheel drive and diff lock. Man, this is, this is good, it's nice, it's comfortable. This is a long-distance cruiser, which would make the journeys I do much easier, and I reckon for that sort of two or three percent of the times when I actually need the four-wheel drive and need the ride height, this would do it. This would. I can't believe, you know, ah, man. The more I drive this, the more I feel like I could happily switch. It's still different, it's still capable, but it's just nice. Oh. Quarter of a mile, your destination will be on the right. Your destination is on the right. Oh, I've got to say, <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun making this video. I watch a lot of automotive YouTube channels and I'm always jealous about them driving around making videos about their cars. So when I realized that I was getting this as a courtesy car, I got really excited. But anyway, let's talk about the exterior looks. I feel like Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> so I'll be the first to admit, it's not as striking as my Delica, but that is such a subjective thing. It's certainly not a bad looking car. It's far more subdued and actually a lot more stealth. Like I'm gonna be sleeping in this tonight here or somewhere around here. And there's no way anyone's gonna realize I'm sleeping in there, apart from the fact that there are no curtains. So if they look through the window, then yeah, they might well see. Uh, but generally, I think it's quite a good looking car. And I think it could be modified to look really aggressive and gnarly. I've seen some amazing pictures online. I know Edward, Adventure Motor Vehicles, he converts these into campers. He lifts them, put chunkier tires on, get a pop top roof. You can get all sorts for them. But yeah, I think it's all right. But actually, the best thing about this car, or van, Oh, what is it? It's not even a car or a van. This, well, I don't know. But anyway, the best thing about this vehicle is actually it's got two sliding doors, so twin doors. That immediately opens the space up. As this vehicle is now, bear in mind though it hasn't got any curtains, but it could be a day van, an overnight van. These seats will fold down into a bed and leave you a seating area and a sleeping area. Uh, it's actually, I'm gonna have, have, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I know my old Delica, or my Delica did that, but I removed all of the seats and did like a sort of semi-permanent camping setup in the back. But yeah, I don't know, I'm gonna have a play and I'm gonna try and figure out my sleeping arrangements before I get all my photography gear out. Cause we are, we're gonna shoot sunset. We're gonna hopefully get some beautiful lights in a gorgeous area. Um, but I just wanna know where we stand with sleeping before I uh, go ahead and, um, wander off with my camera. Let me look. Gotta take this off. There we go. There we go. Now we're cooking on gas. Jesus. Oh, there we go. Slides forward, okay, and then flip it up. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, we got there in the end, and do you know what? It's all right. It's not bad at all. I've got my nice little seat here that I can sit in. I've got a little armrest slash table here. My bed is all laid out, ready to go, and it is. It's okay. It's quite comfortable. It's not too bad. At the back, there's plenty of storage. I've got my Jackery power bank, which will be down next to my bed, as well as my bag that's got a change of clothes in case we get some wet weather or anything like that. Foods in the back. Everything's within reach. Yeah, we're all good to go. The tri driver's position is all intact, so if I need to drive away, I can. I faffed on a bit with the seats, but I feel like once you get used to it, in the end, this is all right. See, as I'm walking away from it, to me, it looks stealthy. What do you think? It doesn't look like a camper van, does it? It doesn't look like anyone's gonna be in there sleeping. It just looks like a bit of a people carrier. 
Uh, I really like, I really value stealth and privacy. <laughs> this is why I love the Yorkshire Dale so much. It's just spectacular. Not only is it quiet, there's no one around, it's just full of these beautiful limestone pavements, lone trees, and I can't get enough. Now, look at this tree behind me. It's absolutely phenomenal. And there are compositions everywhere with all of this paving that's around all of these rocks. But what excites me the most is the sky. If we look, we've got these heavy clouds above us, but over left of the tree to the west, the sun is setting and it won't be long, fingers crossed, before the sun drops and gets through that break. That light is gonna hit the tree, hit these rocks, hit the foreground, but we'll have that dark foreboding sky in the background. That's, uh, that's all, it's all I, this happens a lot. I get excited, I see these things and then it doesn't materialize. So it may not materialize, uh, a bit like the bed in the Delica, <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll keep our fingers crossed and see if we can find a composition. You're joking. You are joking. Hiya. Hiya. You all right? Yeah. You tell you what, your timing is absolutely spot on. The light is just coming. We right. ordered it. You ordered it? Yeah, I ordered yeah. the light. <laughs> So just 15 minutes ago, I was saying how quiet the Yorkshire Dales was and how you don't see any other people around. And then uh, <laughs> three very nice photographers have turned up. And I was chatting to one of the chaps just, just down here. Um, it's actually registered blind, which I find fascinating. Follows light and shadow. And actually in doing photography allows him to see the things he's photographing by magnifying in and looking at them in a high resolution computer screen. All right. Let's have a go with this. Oh, that's light. Isn't Wait, it? that is that is really light. Yeah. It won't operate until you unlock it. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there you go. And then you're in 14. Got you. So that's some of them don't like it, but the fact that it falls away so small, I mean, it's open when using it. It's not an issue. You're a landscaper, so it's not an issue, is it? Yeah. yeah. But some people have an issue where you go, oh, you have to actually unlock the lens to, you know, people oh. know about anything, don't they? Jeez. So we were just discussing uh, the compositional problems with this location in that you want to be down low so that the tree, the branches of the tree are above the horizon. But the problem is when you're down low, you lose a lot of the separation in the limestone pavement and none of us could figure out the best way to solve that problem. And then I jokingly said, what you need is a 14 mil lens. And uh, one of the guys said, do you want to borrow one? I was like, yes, please. So it's quite funny because two weeks ago when I made my Z8 video, I borrowed a 14 mil lens and I absolutely loved it. So I can't believe my luck that I've managed to bag another one. This is the 14 to 30 F4. So um, yeah, we'll see what we can do with this. All right, so after lots of walking around and flapping as the light seems to be getting better and better and I'm struggling to find a composition, I've settled here. The problem with these limestones, they're all pointing straight towards the sun. I want the side light. So there is a bit of a compromise, but I'm happy to sit here and wait. Right, so I've settled on my composition here. Now that the lights come, it's absolutely beautiful. It's just like, just silence apart from shutter delay timers going off all around us as we all shoot this beautiful light. My composition is split in two. The bottom half of the image is all of the limestone and the tree. The top half of the image is nothing but sky. Now we have this black foreboding cloud above us. I'm hoping that it sticks around and catches the sunset. If it does, it will be phenomenal, but it's moving very fast. And actually, I think come sunset, it's gonna be more or less blue skies. That's just my look, but we'll see. At the minute though, this is beautiful golden light composition is okay, I'm not that happy with it. It's a bit of a compromise and for it to be complete, we need that burning red sky. But uh, I tell you what, the 14 mil lens is absolutely spot on.
Right, here you go. Thank you very much. No, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, what's your Instagram account? Because uh, Gary is a blind photographer, and let me tell you, you don't get many of those. So what's your Instagram? It's uh, swirly underscore magnolia. I'm going to have to write that down. It's an anagram of Gary Williamson. Oh, nice. There you go. <laughs> Swirly underscore Magnolia. I'll put it on screen here. Go and follow on Instagram. Blind photographer. Has a 14 to 30 mil lens, which he very kindly lent me. Yeah, we've had a great evening. It's just a shame. The light. It, it's just, it looks promising. And then. And then. It, it airplane died. trails. Airplane trails as well. And clouds. Gone. <laughs> Cover. Uh, oh, sorry. It's all right. <laughs> You've been <bugging. laughs> <laughs>we have some good news our neighbor has left which means we have this beautiful spot all to ourselves although i hope he hasn't left for a particular reason and we get kicked off at midnight or something that would be embarrassing now we're having a beef stew with potatoes for tea tonight but this takes about five minutes till 10 minutes to cook so in the meantime if you don't mind i'd just like to read a message from today's sponsor which is nord vpn now if you don't know what a vpn is it's a virtual private network which allows your device your computer your phone whatever to connect to a server in any country of your choosing. And this is great if you're away from home and you wanna watch your favorite content that you can only access in your home country. Well, by connecting to a VPN in your home country, a server in your home country, then you can essentially trick your computer into thinking you're still at home. But for me, the best thing about NordVPN is their online security and how they can basically protect you against so much stuff that's out there. So many uh, malware and uh, virus attacks, <laughs> everything. Let me, let me just explain one example. So password attacks are really common. If you don't have a strong password, somebody can get hold of that and then they can run uh, bots and algorithms that try it on basically every single <laughs> website out there. But with NordVPN, you can turn on dark web monitor where you'll actually get alerts about your credentials showing up on <laughs> dodgy websites like hackers websites, hackers forums and that kind of thing. But better than that, you can actually use NordPass, which is a password manager. So it will generate and store amazingly strong passwords for you. So you'll basically never have to worry about remembering your passwords again. Everything's just managed through NordVPN. So if you fancy giving that a go, go to nordvpn.com forward slash heater where you can get a huge discount when you sign up for a two year plan. Right. It's getting very dark and uh, my dinner is ready. So I think I'm gonna get in the van, get cozy and try out this bed. Oh, oh whoop, <laughs> falling off. I tell you what, this is nice. I wish I had curtains, but you know, this is not a bad little setup. I've got all my stuff down here. Oh yes. All right, let's get you in, get the door closed. So I would definitely have one of these, I think. I wouldn't keep it like this, though. I'd probably go for one of Edward's um, pods. Makes these pods that you can just take in and take out. That way, 
you can actually leave a couple of seats in and use it more of a day van or a weekend van. So you've got your pods, you can do your cooking and everything. And maybe you could configure the the bed on the chairs like I've done here, but I don't know, maybe slightly better, I'm not sure. Um, and that way you've still got, you take the pod out and you've still got a decent sized van for daily driving and lugging stuff around and kids and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Oh. I am I am absolutely wiped out. I'm really looking forward to bed actually. <laughs> and hopefully we'll get some sleep because I want to wake up nice and early for sunrise tomorrow morning. Where hopefully I'll ever get a second go at that tree. Or there might be something else that catches my eye. We'll see. But keeping my fingers crossed for a good night's sleep on this sort of semi bed lumpy car coming down. Oh. Sorry guys, I had, to, I had to turn off the light because a car was coming and I've got no curtains and everyone's going to think I'm up to no good. Uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on tomorrow morning, see how we get on in this bed and if I wake up lots in the middle of the night. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, I think we'll be alright. I do, I think we'll be alright. Good morning, everybody. My sleep last night was, uh, it was okay. <laughs> I feel like if I was to go for this setup, I'd probably try and do something with the seats, figure it out a bit better, and almost certainly would get a memory foam topper. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have some breakfast, and hopefully we'll get a bit of light this morning. It's looking quite nice, it's looking quite nice, although it is. The freezing. <laughs> so for breakfast, we've got some uh, some porridge, golden syrup flavour, a nice coffee. Now my wife got me these for my birthday recently, and they're called Be Your Own Barista by The Brew Company. Not sponsored, although if they want to send me some, I'll gladly take them because they are excellent. Fresh coffee in a bag pour in the water, leave it to brew for a couple of minutes, little spout just here, and then you can just pour out your coffee and it's nice. It's easy, fast, proper coffee. I can't, just can't get over how good they are. Yeah, definitely recommend these. After breakfast, I decided to head back to the same tree which I had photographed yesterday evening. With the sunlight rising behind me, the image would have a completely different feel. This time, I was able to get the composition I wanted because I didn't have the harsh light to contend with. Although, sadly, I didn't have Gary's 14mm lens, so a 24mm would have to do. I added a polarizer to give more contrast and definition to the sky. The magnetic filters I use are made by Case Filters. It was then just a case of waiting for the sun to rise and the light to hit the tree. Because my lens was so close to the foreground, I opted for a focus stack to get sharpness all the way through the lens. The resulting image is nice enough and has a peaceful quality to it, but lacks the drama of the previous day's image. tell you what, there's a lot to be said about enjoying the peace and quiet. I think I'll ignore that. So 
let's end this video with how we began. Could this delicate D5 replace my 20 year old L400? The idea that was sparked by the email that said, Tom, this is gonna be your courtesy vehicle. Does this still have the same charm as my Delica yet fix all of the issues? Well, it'll certainly do more miles per gallon. This will do probably about 30, maybe 32 miles per gallon because it's got a 2.4 litre engine. It drives, as I've said many times in this video, it drives beautifully and corners like a dream. It also looks good, although in my opinion, not as good as my Delica, but it's certainly different because let's face it, I could just go for a Renault or a Ford Transit or a T5, but like I've said before, I like to be a little bit different and this is certainly different. All right, so that's me more or less done. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, something a bit different. Yeah, these, <laughs> these vehicles do like to beep a lot when you get in them. Uh, I wanted to give a big shout out to Edward at Adventure Motor Vehicles. Um, they're really great down there. And if you are interested in a Delica, definitely check him out. That's where I bought mine from. And I'll tell you what, the service you get is phenomenal. But for now, uh, handbrake. For now, I will bid you farewell until next week. All right, cheers guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later on. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. On my website, I have two books available for purchase and I'll leave links in the description below. Thank you for watching and I will see you all hopefully next week.